Alrighty then. Oh, my voice sounds weird on the microphone, I ain't gonna lie. So, how are y'all doing today? Y'all actually say good. My class, they were kind of quiet when it came to that. So, I'm here to talk to y'all about the Bible. I know, shocking, we're talking about the Bible at devotion, but bear with me. Before we can do that, I need to introduce y'all to my friend. He's very near and dear to my heart, a little complex, complicated. Alright. Here he is, he's a tape measure, don't judge him. So, he's gonna help me illustrate a little point of mine, but I need this valve to help me out because I only have two hands and they're both full. Alright, if you'll stretch out an inch. No, just an inch. Just an inch, Just an inch, there we go. Alright, this represents our lives, about 80 to 100 years. 80 years is 62 years from now. I'm 18. Well, yeah. I'm 18. That's hard to think about. I don't want to think about that right now. Alright, go ahead and stretch out all 25 feet. There you go. <laughs> this represents 25,000 years. Now, if I can't comprehend something that's going to be 62 years from now, I can't even begin to understand something that's going to be 24,978 years from now. This is a very long time. Alright, you can go ahead and bring it back in. Oh, shoot. Oh, I actually don't know how this thing works. Oh, shoot. Just set it there. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, so let's say that if that represents 25,000 years, let's say it didn't stop at 25 feet. Let's say it just kept on going, wrapping around and around the earth till every last blade of grass was covered in that little white tape. That would be a long time. That's just the first day of eternity. So why should we spend our lives living for the inch. In the book of Matthew, chapter 6, Jesus has this to say, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and seal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and seal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see, in this passage, Jesus help, tells us to keep our eyes on what's above in heaven and not what's down here on earth. Because all of this, it's going to end one day. That's why Jesus highlights, highlights earth as a place where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break and seal. He's highlighting just how temporary everything here is. Now, does that mean it's wrong for us to enjoy some of the things we have on earth? Absolutely not. But we can't let that overtake our focus on Christ. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Whatever we love most is going to receive the most attention. Whatever we value most will be given the most time. If we say that we love Jesus and then don't just don't value him as much as we value the things of this world, we constantly put the things of this world above him, can we really say that we love Jesus? That would make flyers, wouldn't it? And even if we convince everyone and fool everyone in thinking that we love Jesus above all other things, in the end, we're not going to be able to fool Christ. In the next chapter, Jesus says this, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. You know, there's a saying, it could feel like you said it a little while ago, you might have said at the academic bank, or sports banquet, you're never going to see a U-Haul behind a hearse, because that stuff's not coming with you. Let me just say, he's right. We can't put our faith in everything we have in this world. Because that stuff isn't going to save us. When we meet Christ in heaven, we don't want to stand on our own righteousness. It's never going to be enough. Our best, the Bible says, is nothing but filthy rags before the Lord. We need Christ to save us. Our souls are so tarnished by our own sin that we have to turn to the one that has no sin. Stuff this world, it's not going to save us. Christ can save you. Christ will save you. Bow your heads, please. Father God, thank you for this day. And I thank you for all you've done for us. 
Lord, I, th I thank you for your mercy and grace, without which we wouldn't be here. Lord, I pray that the gospel will work in the hearts of all here today, that we will grow close to you, Lord. I pray that the, those who thirst for the word will be satisfied. Above all, I thank you for Jesus, who paid the price that we can never pay. Forgive us of where we fail you. I pray this in your son's holy name. Amen. Wonderful. I so enjoy hearing Bryce and Matthew and students profess their love for Christ and share with us. So if anyone else is interested in doing that, please let us know. All right. Um, you are dismissed. I want to